Hey everybody, my name is Nick De Jesus. Thank you Netlify for giving me this opportunity to share my lightning talk, building a Stripe powered shopping cart. I'm gonna jump right in. Let's take a second and think about the word architecture. You're probably thinking about buildings and skyscrapers, maybe a repo, maybe the guy from Matrix 3, but not many people think about the shopping cart. I don't blame you if you didn't think about the shopping cart. In real life, shopping cart logic is just putting things in and taking things out. However, its internet counterpart is way more complicated. You've got state management. You've got calculating total prices and total items, data modeling. You might want to integrate with some kind of backend. And then you've got your edge cases. Luckily, there's a nice mental model for thinking about your shopping cart. At the end of the day, they're really small CRUD apps where create is adding items to the cart, read is displaying data from the cart, update is increasing and decreasing the amount of cart items, and delete would be removing items from the cart. And then you can throw some extra stuff in there like keeping track of the last click item, specifically working with an API like Stripe, and also things that are specific to your own business. So let's talk about Use Shopping Cart. It's built on React hooks. It's Stripe powered. It's Jamstack friendly. Works offline, which is just a fancy way of saying stores data on local storage. It handles all of your fundamental shopping cart needs. And there's two different ways to implement it. There's client side mode, and then there's serverless mode. And it's pretty cool. You should check it out. So why choose Stripe? Stripe has a very easy to use API their documentation is thorough. There's tons of content around it. If you're not gonna to go to Stripe's website directly to learn how to use Stripe, there's a million developers who have made all kinds of content around doing these kinds of things. But what's really good here is Stripe's checkout. It is hella convenient. So what it does is takes your shoppers to the checkout experience on their own hosted solution. That's not normally a thing that you want to host on your own. There's a lot of work to do there, and there's tons of security concerns. And so this talk is mostly around the checkout portion of uh, Stripe. And so let's take a look at the... So Stripe's object gives you a method called redirect checkout. And you can see that this is what you need to successfully take a user to checkout. Now, what's really important here is line items and the objects that are inside line items. You can see here that there's a price and that's supposed to represent the price ID. And then there's the quantity of the product. There's a problem here, though. This just does not have even half of the information that you'll need for a basic e-commerce experience. So what is a basic e-commerce experience? Well, you want to do stuff like display the product and the info of that product, adding and removing items from your cart, the interactive shopping cart icon. You want to display what's in the cart. You want to update the quantity of the items in the cart. And you're going to want a page per product sometimes, or most of the time. It depends on what you need. So I would like to present to you cart details. This is what actually is being used under the hood with you shopping cart. This has the information that you need. It's the ideal structure for your shopping cart slash e-commerce experience. So you can see here, we've got the name of the product, bananas, and a SKU and a SKU ID, which is interchangeable with Stripe's price ID. And also note that the name of the object is the same as the SKU ID. And we do that to make sure there's no data colliding within the cart. Uh, and we have like price, image URL, uh, formatted value to be the formatted in the way that you need for the country and language or whatever. And let's talk about what we've got going under the hood. So entry class is a class that we have in U Shopping Cart that allows you to maintain that exact structure. Um, you can see here that it's accepting the product data itself, a quantity value, 
and the currency and language so it could be properly formatted right there. And so what we're doing with this entry class is using this to create helper functions that would reflect interactions with your cart. So we have a create en entry function that will help you add items to the cart. And you can see here that SKU ID being used as the object name and it's passing the rest of the entry. Uh, and then also at that same level, there's the total price of the entire cart as well as the total amount of items in the cart. So we've got stuff like update entry. Now we have another method called update quantity and this is different because this is accounting for that experience where if you click on add item to cart and then you click on it again, this is what is being used um, under the hood to properly add that value, update those values the way they need to be. And then you've got your remove entry, which I'm sure you expected. And then here's update quantity, which is specifically for updating the quantity of a SKU. And you can see it's actually returning update entry at the end here. Now, all of those functions are actually helpers that exist within a reducer. And what is triggering those functions are cases. So I'll just show you one of those cases in detail. This is add item to cart. If the count is less than or equal to zero, don't do anything. If the object does not exist within the cart state, or if it does exist in the cart state, update the entry. It uses update entry. And then if you're, if it doesn't exist, then it creates the entry. So you can see here that the, the whole pattern here is having the reducer with the helper functions and that entry class that makes sure everything is where it needs to be. And then you move on to calling those entry functions with your switch case actions. And so I'm not going to throw, I don't, I hate throwing too much code at people, but if you wanted to see the rest of those actions, it's available on this slide, or you can check out the U shopping cart repo. You still need more values. You still need more than just the cart values themselves, right? Remember you're creating an experience. And so those values don't necessarily describe stuff like when the cart should be open. And so just like a small list of states that you can account for is like whether somebody hovers over a cart or not when they click on it, you know, should the cart be showing true or false here and some other, there might be other things that you'll need specifically um, for your business. And then this is very simplified, but preparing for a checkout. So at the end of the day, you have all this data, but you can't pass that directly to redirect checkout you still need that line items structure. So here we have a little for loop that formats the objects to be exactly the way they need to be for line items. But wait, there's more. I've only been talking about client, on client only side and I haven't touched the serverless stuff. Um, and so Stripe's redirect to checkout also takes a session ID. Now, this looks a lot simpler when you've, you've got stripe.redirect to checkout and then session ID here. However, you still need to do a little bit of work with line items and stuff like that. Um, but before we get that, we're gonna talk about some security concerns, right? So without a server, you're gonna probably run into malicious users who wanna do things like update the values of the products, the, the prices and then hit checkout. Then next thing you know, you're selling your bananas for like a penny instead of uh, four bucks. I think that's what I had there. And so to combat that, you should have a source of truth for your data. Now it doesn't have to be a JSON object. It could come from an API or something. But the point is, is that you want a way to refer to your products and the actual prices that are that they are, that they're supposed to be. And so once you have that source of truth in place, 
you want to basically have a function that would validate these items um, for you to make sure that like just in case those numbers don't come through properly, um, they will be reflected here. So uh, base, uh, validate cart items handles that logic for you. I'm not going to like <laughs> dig into that. But you can see here, so that's what validate cart items does. And you can see here that we're using validate cart items, which takes in inventory as the first param. That's your source of truth. And then the product JSON, which is actually cart details. Uh, and it returns line items to be formatted in the way that it needs to be when you're creating your Stripe session. So what about user data? You can put user-centric data along with your cart state values as well. The thing that you can do here, uh, which we plan on doing for you shopping cart eventually, is having event trigger functions for every single cart interaction. That would give you the space you need to pass in a function that's going to interact with your back end. five utility functions you wish you had with your shopping cart. I just wanted to go for a really clickbaity title there. So these are methods that we have in, these are functions that we have in use shopping cart. So is client, it checks if you're using use shopping cart on the client side or the server side. So, you know, basically checking if browser is there or not. And this is what makes it, uh, this is what helps us make it Jamstack friendly, like during your build process and stuff. Format currency string formats the money value into the proper um, dollar format or something, currency format, so that you know it matches the language and the country that you're in. Use local storage reducer. It basically syncs up your cart details with local storage so that you know if they accidentally, if your user accidentally closes out of the browser or something, they can go back and things will be where they were. There's checkout handler, handler, which it validates if you're using client side or session ID checkout. So if you want to use the dashboard, you want to make sure you're using client client only mode. Um, if you have a serverless implementation or some kind of server going on, you're going to want to use the session ID version. And then there's get checkout data. And this is what gets triggered. This is what gets called if you're not doing the serverless implementation. It helps you format. Um, take, it takes cart details and formats it into the line items that you need uh, before checking out. And the possibilities are endless, right? So your business is unique. You might need to do something different from everyone else. Having a solid foundation for your shopping cart gives you the flexibility to be creative with your checkout experiences. Some things that I've been wanting to play with personally is um, abandoned cart stuff, right? Like when you when a user adds a cart um, adds an item to the cart or that cart is just even created in general, you know, putting a timestamp on it and then maybe using a serverless function to check that timestamp. You know, there's just all kinds of crazy things you can do from there. And please check out Use Shopping Cart. It handles like 95% of the things I mentioned in these slides. And the website is pretty cool. It, it's an interactive um, website. So you can see how it works without even installing it or setting up any of the examples or anything. Again, thank you Netlify for this opportunity to give this talk. If anybody wants to reach out to me to talk about shopping cart stuff, hit me up at nick at echobind.com. You can also follow me on Twitter. Um, I have that at the very start of the slides. Thank you. <laughs>